The Quran teaches that stars are missiles that God uses to shoot demons when they try to sneak into heaven. If you uh, aren't familiar with Islam, you might not have known that, but that's exactly what the Muslim sources teach. I'll go ahead and read um, two passages from the Quran, and I'll read uh, one passage from the Hadith. This is chapter 37 of the Quran, verses 6 through 10. Chapter 37, verses 6 through 10. Allah says, We have indeed decked the lower heaven with beauty in the stars, for beauty and for guard against all obstinate rebellious spirits. So they should not strain their ears in the direction of the exalted assembly, but be cast away from every side repulsed, for they are under a perpetual penalty, except such as snatch away something by stealth, and they are pursued by a flaming fire of piercing brightness. Notice what you have here. We have indeed decked the lower heaven with beauty in the stars. So the, the stars are made uh, for beauty and for guard against all obstinate, rebellious, evil spirits. So these stars are somehow guarding against rebellious spirits. Re rebellious spirits. Well, how do they do that? Um, they, so that they should not strain their ears in the direction of the exalted assembly. So these stars are somehow keeping demons from listening to what Allah is saying in the assembly. But be cast away from every side, repulsed, but be cast away. So they're going to be repulsed by these stars. Um, for they are under a perpetual penalty, except such as snatch away something by stealth. So if one of these demons actually hears something and tries to run away with the message, they are pursued by a flaming fire. That's when you see a shooting star. It's because Allah has hurled a star at a demon who heard something and is trying to run away with what he heard from Allah, and then Allah hurled a star at him. Uh, let me also read chapter 67, verse 5, which is shorter. Allah says, And we have from of old adorned the lowest heaven with lamps. These lamps are the, the stars. And we made such lamps as missiles to drive away the evil ones and have prepared for them the penalty of the blazing fire. So, we have made such lamps, the stars, as missiles to drive away the evil ones and have prepared for them the penalty of the blazing fire. In case you want to try and reinterpret these, uh, we know what the interpretation of Muhammad's companions was on uh, passages like this. Um, in Sahih al-Bukhari, number 3198, we have uh, Abu Qatada. Who's Abu Qatada? <laughs> Abu Qatada. And when you're talking about uh, the companions of Muhammad, you're talking about the greatest generation of Muslims who ever mm -hmm. lived. Mm -hmm. So when you mention these people, you're not just mentioning any Joe Shmo. Mm -hmm. You're mentioning the creme de la creme of Islam. right? So this is who you're referring to. So should a Muslim today look at the, listen to what we're saying, read what the Quran says about stars being missiles, and say, oh, that can't be what it means. I can just interpret this no, however I want. Because the sound uh, narrations that the majority of Muslims follow say that the best generation of Muslims is Muhammad and his companions the generation after that, and the generation after that. The first three generations of Muslims are <clears throat> the most perfect example of how to understand and implement Islam. So no, they can't do that. Sahih al-Bukhari, number 3198. Abu Qatada, mentioning Allah's saying, and indeed we have adorned the nearest heaven with lamps. So he's commenting on chapter 67, verse 5 of the Quran. And he says, The creation of these stars is for three purposes, and they are, one, as decoration of the nearest heaven, two, as missiles to hit the devils, and three, as signs to guide travelers. So if anybody tries to find a different interpretation, he is mistaken and just wastes his efforts and troubles himself with what is beyond his limited knowledge. Notice, he doesn't just say, hey, this is my, this is my uh, limited opinion. He says, this is the teaching of Allah, and anyone who tries to understand it differently yeah. is wasting his time. Where do you think he got that interpretation from? Uh, let's see, where did he learn the Quran mm -hmm. from? Muhammad? Yeah. So you can't just uh, brush him aside. You mm -hmm. can't do that if you're going to be consistent to your uh, position, uh, because we're dealing with Sunni Muslims, and that's vitally important. The majority of Muslims in the world are Sunni Muslims. They follow the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad. As, and Muhammad said, you got to follow my example, the example of my companions, the, uh, and the generation after them, and the generation after that. So there's no way you can just brush this aside. So according to Islam, stars are yeah. missiles that God uses to shoot demons when they try to sneak into heaven. You got it.
and there's no way around it. Yep. Um, so if you believe that the Quran is from God, your response shouldn't be, how dare you guys say that about the Quran? Your response should be, well, I guess stars are missiles that God uses to shoot demons. And yeah. <laughs> even though we know scientifically that when you see a shooting star, it's not an actual star, it's a piece of debris that hit our atmosphere and, and burst into flames, um, even though we know that, you have to believe that a shooting star is actually a star yeah. Yeah. that Allah hurled at a demon. In fact, the Muslim response has to be, and Allah and his messenger know best. Mm -hmm. Allah and his messenger know best. Who cares what scientists have to say, you kafir? So you yeah. Muslims can go into your science classes and tell your teachers that because you have it mm -hmm. from Allah himself.